Hey everybody, welcome to Board Online, Board Offline. Today we're gonna to bring you a solo gameplay of Founders of Gloomhaven. This is a, how do you even describe it? I guess it's kind of a city building game, but really it's almost got a, a pickup, not really pickup and delivery, but kind of a pathway uh, construction game because you, you build these buildings that uh, produce resources and then you have to connect them via roadways to other buildings to create upgraded resources and it's it's pretty cool so we're going to play the solo uh, version of this today it's got a few different rules it's really more of a uh, a race to get six prestige buildings built before the end of the seventh round and also you have to kind of keep pace as you go along because there are certain things that can end the game along the way so let's get right down into it i'm going to show you the setup right now and uh kind of show you what we're working with Okay, so here we go. We are starting up our solo play of uh, Gloomhaven. Okay, now uh, let's th let's go through exactly how this is set up. And, I'm sorry, not Gloomhaven, Founders of Gloomhaven, uh, which, I mean, really, we're building Gloomhaven, so in a way, this is the very first solo play of Gloomhaven, I guess. All right, so I am playing as the Quatrals, which I hope is the way it's pronounced. Uh, these guys are basically real mechanically minded. The... Uh, this is their resource that they bring to the table normally in a, a multiplayer game, which is knowledge. So that's really the resource that they trade in is knowledge. Uh, oops, let me put one of these down here. Okay. Um, this area right here represents my income. I start at one income in the game because I have uh, one access to one resource right now, which you can also see over here. I have this blue cube here indicating that I own a a uh, resource tile that provides knowledge. So uh, as I increase the resource tiles I own, my income will increase by one every time up to a maximum of 10. So then let's see, uh, these guys right here are workers. They are used sparingly in the game. They're, they're like they're, there's not, this is not a worker placement game. You're not gonna be throwing them out there a lot. But they're used, for instance, uh, I could, use one here and this would let me build an advanced resource building at minus two cost. Now the trick is I can only use a worker if a house has been built. So if I had this house out here then that one worker could be used but these other two would still be locked until I built other, another house. The other trick with that is, so let's say this house is here, the other trick with that is that another house has to be in one of the other sections of the city. So the city has this section here this right here is a section, and then everything on that side of, this is a wall here, so everything on this side and everything on that side are the other two sections. So one house per section. Similar to that is, similar to that is that, so I have this literature, or literature, this knowledge resource building here. If I wanted to build another knowledge resource building, uh, let's see if I can find it real quick. Uh, here we go. If I wanted to build another knowledge resource building, it would be, uh, have to be in a different section of the city. So basically, each type of building, you can only have one in each section of the city. Okay, so moving on, also on here, uh, this doesn't matter for the solo game because in the solo game, I, have, uh, I, I can own all of the resources. In a multiplayer game, I wouldn't be able to own, or I wouldn't be able to start as my secondary resource, which you'd have here. I wouldn't be able to have metal or uh, crops as it but again doesn't matter for solo so these right here are bridges and um, uh, gates which are used bridges used for crossing the river there gates are used for crossing through the um, the wall right there or you know there or however you want to do it all right so let's see that's really everything that we need to know about this space here. I start with seven coins, all right? Over here, this keeps track of 
the resources that I own. Again, in the solo game, I'll own every, every resource that gets put out there. In a multiplayer game, I could just simply have access to a resource and not actually own it. Uh, the, the square with just one line means access. So for instance, up here, that would be access to food. Down here would be that I actually own a resource building that makes food. So again, for now, we're starting with just the knowledge resource, okay? Uh, I've got all my extra cubes and uh, disks over here. Let me put one of these disks up here on the zero space. You can't see that. It's outside the frame. As I build that way, I'll adjust the frame. But this right here lets you see everything that's really important right now as much as possible. Uh, over here, these are uh, advisors that I can get. To, to be able to get an advisor, you have to meet two qualifications. First, got to be able to pay the cost that's above it. Uh, one one, two, and two for each of those. Then this symbol here in the bottom left corner, you gotta be able to meet that. I'm gonna adjust the lighting here in a second, uh, but you gotta be able to meet that. So that right there is bricks. And you can see to even get to bricks, I have to first have stone and population, and then I can build a brick building, and then I'll have, I'll be, I would be able to get the brick layer. So that is obviously a tier two resource, as is books. You can see right there, books. For the engineer, engineer is pretty awesome. I'm, I'm probably gonna make a push for him here at some point. The ringleader and the haggler both have tier one resources, metal and crops. So those guys will be something that I'm probably gonna be looking for, uh, looking towards grabbing here early on. So when you do purchase one of these guys, what happens is they go into your hand as well, and basically they are now an additional action you can take. You start the game with five actions. Well, really, I guess technically speaking, four actions because call to vote is always the last one that signals the end of the round in the solo game. So you would have this guy added to your hand, and now you've got these uh, an additional action. The trick in the solo game is that to use their main action, which is what differentiates them from all other cards, you would then get rid of him, you're done. You can only use their main action one time. However, I can use the basic action as many times as I want. The basic action gives me either one money, one fleeting influence, one road, or I can use one of my workers if I have any available on a special ability. So that is something different with them. Now, the way you win the solo game is by within seven rounds successfully building six uh, prestige buildings. Now, one thing I haven't set out yet that is different in the solo game than in the main game is that, uh, so this prestige building will be free. However, the other two have a cost associated with them. Okay, so this prestige building costs two fleeting influence. Um, and this prestige building costs two perm or lasting influence. Now, lasting influence, one lasting influence equals two temporary or fleeting influence. So, I'll be what I'll be able to do is if I have one, you know, just just one of these, then I could purchase one of these buildings. And now, as I complete prestige buildings out on the board not just build them, but actually complete them, these two will continue to get more expensive, which makes it more difficult to get anything other than what the game simply offers you. So, with all that being said, ooh, actually, look at this. Okay, one thing that I have, that this will be a good chance to show you all this. If you ever have two buildings, two prestige buildings that are exact same shape, and the exact same, now wait a minute, are they the same shape though? Because, okay, so we have the golems, cool, focus, golems and gizmos, we've got the happy alchemist. Now there's no orientation that's required when you place it on the board, so they are the same shape. You can see just like that, okay? If you ever have two buildings the same shape and the same color, both blue, then you have to get rid of one of them. Okay, yeah, so I need to put the rightmost, the rightmost one, so uh, golems and gizmos is gonna go away. And instead, we've got Temple of the Great Oak. Okay, all right, so now 
I think basically that is pretty much all you need to know. I, what, oh, oh, how can I lose? Okay, so when I place a prestige building out, okay, so um, let's say that, you know, the Happy Alchemist was, that's actually not even a legal spot for it, but let's just say it was there. Um, when you place it out, you put a neutral token on there to symbolize that I have not sent any, I've not delivered any resources to it yet this round. All right, now, Every time, at the end of every round, you're going to put one of those on every prestige building that has not been completed yet, all right? So in that next round, the way you get these off of them is by delivering a resource. And so you can see here, I need crops, I need uh, gems, and I need machinery to complete it. Well, every round I need to give it at least one of those in order to remove that token. If I don't remove that token, then for every token on the board, I have to pay this amount of influence to remove it. And believe me, as the game progresses, it's going to be a lot and you really need to be delivering resources to these buildings. And you'll see how that works as we uh, play along, but I really think that's pretty much everything you need to know. Oh, one last thing. So the game goes ahead and tells you for the solo mode, uh, since the solo mode is more of a, uh, a puzzle and, and, and so I mean you are keeping track of your score which you can use to kind of gauge your success particularly if you do manage to win the game um, then uh, you know so, so the, the book tells you which races are easier and the quatrals are one of the easy races to play with I've played this game twice so far solo lost both times also starting in this section is the easiest section to start in. This is normal, hard, and very hard, or something like that. But so this is the normal difficulty in terms of section and the an easy race to play with. I do have to start on this space because it has a number there. Uh, so like, and what those numbers are. So in a two-player game, this would be a space you could start on. And where's the other two? Uh, the other one's over here, which is actually off screen. Let me go up real quick. The other the two's right here. So in a two-player game, you start there and there. In a three-player game, you would start in those two, and then also somebody would start here. And in a four-player game, somebody would also start there. Okay, but I mean I, that is everything we need to know. Let's swing back down real quick. Oh, actually, you know what? One last thing. Let's go through these cards real quick. So the actions I've got: upgrade, ignore the follow action. That's only in multiplayer games. Upgrade. Basically, I spend. Uh, it's four money for a tier two building, six money for a tier three building, and I can build that building as well as a road. All right, now I'll show you how, what the prerequisites are for building and stuff, how that works whenever we get into it, but I can do those. I can do that in either order as well. All right, recruit. I get one, uh, I have to pay, obviously, for one of these guys, meet the prerequisites, and gain one fleeting influence. Right here we've got trade. Oh, and by the way, all of these on the back have basic actions as well that you can do. Trade. Okay, so this one makes your eyes cross when you first look at it. But basically, this you gotta look at it in columns. This column is saying I can import one basic resource, and it's one money if I put it on an entrance space, which is this color here. Two money if I put it on a beach space, so this right here, or three money if I put it on a central, which is the gray, or a forested area, which is the green, all right? So for the solo game, these are the only ones that matter. This is all stuff that requires other players for, for them to take effect, so that's all we'll worry about. Uh, construct, I can build either a home for my workers, a bridge, or a gate at minus one the normal cost. Normally, but all of those cost four, so it would be three instead. And then call to vote, We'll go over that at the end of the round. Basically, I play these other four first, and then at the end of the round, I play Call to Vote. And uh, yeah, and obviously, I can extend my ability to, you know, how long a, a round will take me by increasing the number of advisors I have. Um, and I have to balance that against using their special ability because then obviously they go away. Okay, so there you go. That's the setup. Uh, come back in just a day or two, hopefully. I'll have the first gameplay video for you. And until then, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. You can find me on Twitter at Board Offline. At board offline. Uh, if you like Founders of Gloomhaven, there's a link in the description below to purchase it over on Amazon, and just a little bit of that will go to the channel. Until next time, if you're bored online, 
Board Offline.